The Federal Communications Commission is weighing the future of your internet privacy today. The FCC is expected to vote to begin the process of rolling back Obama-era net neutrality rules. The telecom industry and the Trump administration have criticized the regulations as unnecessary. For more on this, let's go to Errol Barnett in Washington. Uh, Errol, good to see you. So this is a huge deal and it's been sort of under the radar for a lot of people because there's been so much coming out of the office of the president, the yeah. Oval Office. So explain for our viewers what is net neutrality and why are opponents to President Trump's FCC concerned about its rollback? Yeah, hey there Vlad and Amory, you're absolutely right. This is something that affects all of us. Net neutrality is essentially the belief that everyone's access to the internet should be equal and that internet service providers, ISPs like Verizon, Comcast, AT&T and others as private companies shouldn't be able to speed up or slow down uh, someone's internet. Opponents uh, to this fear that rolling back these net neutrality guidelines, which were only just established in 2015 under the Obama administration, would would allow internet companies to pick winners and losers. And so uh, digital uh, companies, uh, tech companies, left-leaning groups have been up in arms about this. This is kind of in the background of what's been happening here in Washington with the Trump administration because they feel that uh, if these net neutrality uh, guidelines are rolled back as they are expected to be, it will be a loss for the consumer uh, while private powerful corporations will have a stronger ability to throttle internet access. So this is considered the Federal Communications Commission's first formal step to dismantle these Obama era net neutrality rules. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, Trump's FCC chair and what his background is? Well, Ajit Pai, um, I, I spoke with him earlier this week, is the FCC chairman, very charismatic. He has uh, been a lawyer for most of his professional career, but was an employee of Verizon, their legal counsel, for some time. And since he was appointed by President Trump, he has been uh, meeting with technology companies, with private companies, and has made it clear that he thinks that those Obama-era net neutrality guidelines are too restrictive for companies. He says that it inhibits growth and what he said to me is that he favors what he describes as a light touch approach essentially that before the net neutrality rules went into place in 2015 he believes there was significant growth of websites like Facebook and Google um, uh, and the like and that that was done without government intervention. So his view is remove those net neutrality rules, allow internet service providers to invest in expanding broadband and get regulation out of the way. It's not uncommon for, um, for from what we're seeing from the White House. President Trump believes in less regulation so companies can be free to invest their money. But opponents say that, look, for most people in America, you only have one internet service provider, specifically those counties that voted for President Trump. Trump. If you live in a rural place in Montana, for example, you don't have your pick of three or four companies, you only have one. And if those companies can now charge you a premium to stream CBSN or watch Netflix or do what many people do now through their internet, you as the consumer have fewer choices. So it has really teed up um, you know, private companies that think this will allow them to have fewer restrictions. And a lot of uh, tech folks who I have interviewed, including the guy who coined the phrase net neutrality, Professor Tim Wu in Columbia, who say this, w with, when people realize the impact it will have on their daily lives, um, there will be outrage. So the proceedings are underway right now. And um, it's, it's something that's been under the radar, so to speak, uh, here in Washington. Absolutely. I mean, it's expected to be a bitter, months-long battle. Um, and you, as you point out, Errol, it's really hard to understand what a light touch means yeah. because yeah. anytime you strangle, you, you put a bottleneck on the data that somebody can receive on their computer, on their iPad, on their uh, mobile devices, mm -hmm. and then you allow companies to charge premiums vis-a-vis uh, -vis other companies who may have different pricing schemes, I, I mean, it's not clear what that light touch will look like. So I guess the question is, when can we expect a final decision? 
Well, the, uh, it's called the Notice for Proposed Rulemaking at the FCC. That has started today, and essentially um, the general public will be able to comment on this issue on the FCC website for the next two months. Um, after that, the FCC will try and mitigate public commentary into what their proposed rulemaking changes will be. But as you said, it's, it's, it's kind of a complicated legal story, but the bottom line is if these restrictions are rolled back, Internet service providers will have more freedom and you and I as customers will have to um, you know see what happens and I said to the FCC chairman you know doesn't this pave the way for companies to charge people more money for the service they already receive and he said well let's not work uh, in hypotheticals we've not seen any evidence for that just yet uh, but John Oliver the comedian on HBO has taken a particular liking to this issue in 2014 and even this past weekend Vlad and Anne Marie and when he did he essentially set up a new U URL to make it easier for Americans to get to the place on the FCC website where you could leave commentary and at last count 1.6 million uh, different comments have been posted to their website at, at one point it crashed and the FCC believed it was under a, a denial of of service attack. So when comedians, of course, he, he does have an agenda and a, a point of view, but when this issue is spelled out for people, it really does scare them. And the expectation is, despite the backlash that's already uh, been uh, directed toward the FCC, these uh, rule changes are expected to be passed sometime this fall. So keep an eye on this. Um, it's something that we will certainly continue to track, but it could have an impact on all of our lives. Uh, of Did course. I mean, when you think about our dependency now on the Internet and so many people who can't afford cable right. depend almost wholly on the Internet Absolutely. to get information, right? Exactly right. Exactly right. Did uh, Ajit Pai uh, share with you his Reese's Pieces coffee mug, which John Oliver also highlighted on his show, Errol. Did he drink coffee out of that mug while you were interviewing him? <laughs> he absolutely did. did he really? <laughs> I was totally kidding. I thought he would know. Wow, that's incredible. It was funny. I think it's his thing. I mean, he he walked into the room with this big oversized Reese's cup with coffee. I mean, it's comical, but he does drink from that. He's also, I mean, this is what's interesting about the FCC chairman. He has taken to the airwaves. He has made himself available for interviews, and he even read mean tweets about himself as part of an effort to raise awareness of the changes he's making. So, you know, for those on the left and those uh, digital companies who kind of paint him as a villain, he's done whatever he can to kind of break uh, through that. But you're both right. This People may not realize that your cell phone, the data in your cell phone, when you go home and connect through Wi-Fi, that information can be shared to your internet service provider. So just imagine the amount of information they have on all of us, our shopping preferences, where we physically go each and every day. Another FCC change allowed them to get rid of this opt-in requirement mm -hmm. for, for those companies to sell that information. So, so technology is moving so quickly, the government is having a hard time creating a legal framework to catch up with it, and all of this is happening while uh, the the nation's attention is really fixated on what's happening with the president. So it's it's one aspect of our lives that could very well be changing here in the next few months. Yeah, Absolutely indeed. right. Errol Barnett in Washington. Thanks a lot, Errol. Sure.